Well, speaking of uh, presidents in history, uh, this month marks an important milestone in the Revolutionary War. 248 years ago, Boston got the help it needed to free the city of British control. That help came from nearly 60 cannons that came from all the way in Fort Ticonderoga. A long way away back in those days. News Send photojournalist Gavin Wilson, Williams rather, spoke with the uh, curator Matthew Kegel to show us how they accomplished such an amazing feat. After the battles of Lexington and Concord, American forces pursue the British back towards the city of Boston, and basically all the British troops hole up in Boston. That's great, but how do you get them out of Boston? You need guns that can reach from the siege lines to the city. And the Americans don't have really a domestic industry capable of making cannon at this time. They're trying, but they don't have it quite yet. So they need to find artillery wherever they can. And they know that up here at these forts, Ticonderoga in particular, there's literally hundreds of cannon. It was held by the British Army. Less than a month after the war opened, it is captured by American forces. But it's another matter to get all of that artillery where it needs to be outside of Boston, because it's a long trip. It's November when George Washington issues orders to Henry Knox to get up here and then actually get the guns where they need to be. Henry Knox ultimately leaves Ticonderoga with 59 cannon, mortars, and howitzers and begins an almost 300-mile march back to the American line outside Boston in the middle of the winter over 1775 and 1776. To move guns requires going over land and water. Between here and Boston, they have to make, I think, three river crossings. By December, the water starts to freeze up here. And what Knox ultimately does is move them the easiest way you can in the winter, which is not by wheeled vehicles. It's on sleds. <laughs> Every farmer knows this because winter is when you sled your logs. So eventually, after a while, snow starts to fall. They're able to get a heavy bed of, of snow underneath them, and they begin to make that journey south. There are also precautions you have to take. Some of these guns that he is moving weigh multiple tons for a single gun. If that gun cracks and falls through the ice, you lose the gun, you lose the horses, and the value of all of that. Over the course of the expedition, Knox loses two guns. One falls through the Mohawk and is never recovered. Another falls through the ice near Albany. But they're able to actually get the citizens of Albany to come out and help heave it out of the water. Every gun but one made it to the American siege lines outside of Boston. The mission was, in that way, a resounding success. With this addition of heavy artillery, the British realize that they cannot maintain their position, and they decide on March 17, 1776, to evacuate the city. This frees Boston, where the war began. It buoys the hopes of the country, a country that still has not yet declared independence, but which is now involved in a pitched war against a major military power that they have forced out of an American city. This is, this is in some ways, you know, one of the first great kind of American stories. This involves a kind of cross-colonial operation. And if that had failed, you know, perhaps that could have suggested that Americans from different colonies, different provinces, couldn't work together. But this showed that these different places could get along, they could work together, and that was vital for ultimate victory in the revolution. Our thanks to News 10 photojournalist Gavin Williams for that story, and really, what an incredible trek mm -hmm. that was for that time. Well, we always say, and Cap, we've talked about this, because you, you grew up, nor I think, just north of Boston, yeah. right? I, we literally live where all this history happened. Yeah. yeah, it's always amazing. You know, Boston's so historic, so historic around here as well. You can go out to Schoharie County, it's so historic. It's just, uh, where we live where the history of this country, when you think about it, began. So we're pretty lucky. Amsterdam tonight, it is clear, it is cold, it is not quite as windy, but camera shaking a little bit, so there's still a breeze, but it will be dropping off quickly tonight. Now, I want to give you some great news.